Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title. And I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And we celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, the one that is and was and is to come. And there is no other master of the universe. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to look at mysteries, mysteries in the universe today. And so if you brought your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Revelation chapter 14. And we'll start reading verse 14. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap. For the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for the grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city up to the horse's brindles for 1,600 furlongs. Now, brothers and sisters, in verse 14, we read, he was like the son of man with the golden crown. Obviously, this is Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And he is bringing home his church, brothers and sisters. Because, brothers and sisters, we have to die to arise. The second group are the people that are going to hell. But well, that's not you and me, amen? Amen. Because we believe that Jesus, the only begotten Son, came incarnated from heaven, died, was buried in a rose for your sins and mine, and we have repented of our sinful ways, and we can't wait for Jesus to come in the sky and take us home, amen? Amen. Now we read in chapter 11, that there's two witnesses that are to come, two prophets. Many people think that those two prophets are Moses and Elijah because Moses and Elijah meet with Jesus and see him in his glory, but not so. It's Enoch and Elijah because you have to die to arise. And those are the only two individuals that have not died yet. Amen? Amen. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But we must die to arise. That's what a resurrection is, brothers and sisters. Next, we're going to go to Hosea chapter 1. We'll start reading verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Biri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Haaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak to Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take yourself a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry. For the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to him, Call his name Jezreel. For in a little while I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu and bring it in to the kingdom of the house of Israel. It shall come to pass in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bore a daughter. Then God said to him, Call her name Lorahima, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah, will save them by the Lord their God. Now when she had winged Lorahima, she conceived and bore a son. Then God said, Call his name Loami, for you are not my people. I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people. There it shall be said to them, You are sons of the living God. Then the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. I want to talk about a couple kings here that is mentioned in verse 1. Uzziah was a good king, a good king 
does the commandments and the statutes of God. And a couple of these kings were bad kings and a couple of them were good. But this particular king was a good king. But then he got puffed up with pride and he went into the temple and to burn incense where only the priests were allowed to burn incense. And God inflicted him with leprosy for the rest of his life. Brothers and sisters, that is a perfect example of never think you're so close to God, you can do whatever you want, because you can't. Amen? Amen. Now another king that was not a good king is Ahaz. In 2 Kings chapter 16, it reads that he did sacrifices with children in the fire brothers and sisters horrible but that is no different than today people aborting their children and those children will beat them up to heaven i'm pointing this out to you to show you that god was very very mad at the harlotry of the israelites leaving him and worshiping other idols it hurt him because he is a jealous god Say to your brethren, my people, and to your sisters, mercy is shown. Bring charges against your mother. Bring charges, for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotry from her sight, and her adultery from between her breasts. I will not have mercy on her children, for they are the children of harlotry, for their mother has played the harlot. So we're seeing a history of Israel. I'm reading from verse 13. I will punish her for the days of bowels to which she burned incense. She decked herself with earrings and jewelry and went after her lovers. But me she forgot, says the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. I will give her vineyards from there and the valley of Eker as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came out from the land of Egypt. So brothers and sisters, God is showing mercy to them, even though they were so bad, not obeying his commandments and his statutes and going and committing adultery and idolatry with the other nations. But God still shows mercy. He still loves the Jews. He loved them then and he still loves them now. And he's saying he will show them mercy and they shall sing there. Brothers and sisters, the way we bless the Lord is two ways. We praise his name and give him glory for all the blessings that he does for us. And we sing worship songs to Yeshua. Jesus songs, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. So, moving over to chapter 3. Then the Lord said to me, Go again and love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel. And I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be toward you. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king or a prince, without sacrifice or sacred pillar, without a heifer or a teraphim. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. And they shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the later days. So brothers and sisters, the Lord has taken us all the way up till now. And he's saying that he's going to forgive them and they are going to repent and come back to him, to David, their king. And we know that Jesus was called son of David as king. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, get excited that the Jews are going to come back to the Lord. But in verse 13, it says that he will punish her. And so to look in this a little further, let's move to the book of Zechariah, chapter 14. We will start reading verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished. Half the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. So brothers and sisters, nations are going to move to fight Israel, but the Lord is going to save the remnant. The ones that accept Yeshua as their savior and follow him in obedience and receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So now let's see how the Lord deals with the people who attack Israel 
We'll start reading in verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. And their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. Brothers and sisters, this is an atomic bomb. All right, one more passage. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. And we will read verse 18 and 19. I have surely heard Ephraim be roaming himself. You have chastised me, and I was chastised like an untrained bull. Restore me, and I will return, for you are the Lord my God. Surely, after my turning, I repented, and after I was instructed, I struck myself on the thigh. I was ashamed, yes, even humiliated, because I bore the reproach of my youth. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came for the Jews. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus is in Tyre and Sidon, and a woman of Canaan comes to him and pleads with him to have mercy on the son of David. She says, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. And his response is, I was not sent except for the lost sheep of Israel. But she came and worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. And our God is merciful and healed that child right then. And that's what the Jews have to do. They need to realize what they have done. For almost 2,000 years after Jesus came and died a suffering death on the cross for the Jews to redeem them back to God, they have not accepted him in Israel. They persecute his name in Jerusalem. And when they're being attacked, as they are today, they're wondering, why? Or the Holocaust, why? Well, that's why, brothers and sisters. He died a suffering death for them. And all they have to do is accept him as their Savior, their Messiah. The Lord tells us in the Gospel, pray to the Father in Yeshua's name, and your prayers will be answered. If not, they're not going to be heard. Brothers and sisters, the word says love covers a multitude of sins. And that is about Jesus covering all the sins of all those who receive him and are chosen. And the chosen are the ones who repent, give up their lives for him, and receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, pray up and read up every day. And keep the love of Yeshua in your heart. And continue carrying the cross given to you by taking Christ as your master, your teacher, your example. Believe his doctrine and obey him. And we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen.